Happy Sunday and another Christmas Eve. This is Hog Hoops Report. That's Kevin McPherson. I'm Evan Kamiko. Kevin, uh, it was quite a week, to say the least, about Arkansas basketball. They only had one game against UNC, uh, excuse me, UNC Wilmington. I'm thinking ahead. We're talking about that, trying to get that right. Abilene Christian is the team they played earlier this week. It was an 83-73 win for the Hogs, but it didn't come easy. They were trailing by, what, 35-28 at halftime and then had to score 55 points in the second half. So I guess my first question and the biggest question is, what's going on with this Arkansas rotation right now? This is one of the most enigmatic teams Eric Mulsman ha has had. And when we go back to the preseason, you know, you're thinking all this experience he brought in, he had five guys return. That's almost unheard of for him. Uh, key guys, you know, coming back. And so it's, it's to be this enigmatic, to be this up and down. I mean, Arkansas is eight and four. The record, they are, the hogs are what the record says they are. Uh, then you look at rotations. Here's a guy that his career at coaching at the college level has been seven, eight rotation, kind of keeping it clean there and cutting it off there. And we're seeing in both halves of basketball games where it's competitive. It's not a blowout runaway win where you can afford to just get guys in. Uh, Arkansas playing 10, 11 guys, sometimes 12 in both halves. And so it tells you a lot about what knowing what Mulsman's preferences are. But you've also known going back three years, it's like a broken record now. We know Arkansas hits rough patches, sometimes a handful of games or more. Started SEC play just last year, one in five. That's what, I mean, Arkansas's got SEC play coming up in just two weeks. That's what's on the menu. You've got, you mentioned UNC Wilmington. We're going to talk about that. But as far as Abilene Christian, it was more of the same. I mean, Arkansas shooting percentages were really good, especially really the second half to make it overall good for the game. You mentioned 55 points second half. Arkansas scored only 28, like you said, 35 down, 35, 28. The Hogs were actually down nine early in the second half because uh, ACU scored first, so it was a nine-point deficit. Uh, but I think I, I always think there are positives when I look at uh, Arkansas's, you know, won four out of its last five games. As oddly as that sounds, it's true. Uh, part of that streak is the one loss to a ranked Oklahoma team and a win over a ranked Duke team, top 10 at the time. When I look back at those four wins, I wrote this in, in my Stock Risers report, Arkansas's defense held Duke, Furman, uh, Lipscomb, and Abilene Christian. All of those teams, the best they shot, they, none of those teams got the 39% from the field overall shooting. And only one of those teams shot better than 30% or got to 30% or better, actually. The rest of them were held down in the 20s. Where Arkansas's real problems are, Evan, and you saw it again in Abilene Christian, are the hustle plays. This is a game where Arkansas got demolished in the on the offensive glass, even though it was plus 11 overall in the glass. Not able to create turnovers, only two steals for the Hawks, 10 for ACU. Uh, so it was a lopsided advantage in, in turnovers. Uh, so it's the hustle plays. And ACU, Abilene Christian made one more field goal in a 10-point loss than the Hawks and shot 20 more times. So even though Arkansas's defense, when you look at it percentage-wise on field goal, yielding field goals, keeping it pretty – I went through it. Those four teams, including Duke, those percentages are outstanding, and they're almost elite. But when you're giving up all those 50-50 ball, you're turning it over, you're losing that battle, your assist-to-turnover ratios upside down, all the effort plays come back to bite you and get you in these situations. So against Lipscomb, Arkansas was great for 30 minutes, had to hang on for dear life after a 17 nothing Lipscomb run. How weird does that sound against a high major? Almost yeah. had a chance to really had a chance to win that game. And then this game, Arkansas looks dead to rights for 20 minutes. And the first minute of the second half, they're down nine. And then they put on a, a, a show and we could talk about individual guys. I'd like to do that a little bit, but to me, it's all the effort plays. That's the difference right now from this team uh, stepping up and being the kind of defensive team that landed Eric Mossman's previous three Razorback squads. Top, between, ranked between 10 and 20th in defensive efficiency by the end of the season. That's where the dust settled. This team's nowhere near that right now. And then they've had their problems on offense. We know about stagnant offense and some other things there. Uh, but I think it really starts with the effort, hustle plays, and fixing defense first. Some of it's good. Some of it not good at all. And one of the big things that you kind of talk about when you talk about energy and you look at this team is the addition of Keon Manyfield. He had 11 points, was plus 21 in the game. Must spoke about him afterwards and spoke very highly because he brought that energy. He brought the enthusiasm off the bench. And that's something that you're seeing in this Arkansas starting lineup that, that they're kind of missing. And I don't know, maybe it's, you know, my ignorance of, of not understanding, you know, why you're, you're throwing an L. Ellis and Davenport for two to three minutes, then pulling them on the bench. And then we don't see these guys until later in the game. 
Uh, but but Moss has done that kind of consistently with Caleb Battle coming off the bench, and now he's got Tremont Mark coming off the bench. So having a guy like Keon Manyfield, who who again the Hogs have emphasized, we need a true guard to run the offense. And Manyfield, you know, I was watching some of his Washington highlights yesterday, and and the dude just lit up in the Pac-12, and he is fun to watch. He's that higher energy and that piece who really made a difference in this game against Abilene Christian. Well, he made he was one of the I call him the three amigos in that second half. Tremont Mark. You know, 17 of his game high, 25 points, the 11 rebounds. We could talk about that double double because I think he's been a guy that, although he scored well, there's been a lack of other production put to put around some pretty good scoring. And then he's kind of a one dimensional score. You know, he's an off the bounce, a methodical bounce kind of guy. Sometimes that can stagnate your offense. Uh, you know, Arkansas finished with nine assists in this game. This not, you know, on uh, 20 plus field goals made. So you, you're really looking at a lot of one on one play, but it worked in the second half. But you mentioned Minifield will go through that. Uh, but, but you know, get, getting back to what you said about not getting a lot from your starting group, part of that is you've moved Tremont Mark now for a couple of games playing off the bench. He initially, when he got back from injury after the Bahamas and that nasty spill against North Carolina, first game, he didn't play against Duke and Arkansas won that game. And then the next game he played off the bench. So I don't know if this is going to be a permanent thing, but it helps to explain how Arkansas's bench uh, in the last three games, just the last three games, the bench has outscored the starters 161 to 61, plus 100. And it's almost identical to Arkansas's bench compared to Oklahoma, Lipscomb, and Abilene Christian's benches. When you look at it collectively, Arkansas 161. We know they scored that many because I just said they did compare them to the starters. And the opponent's bench is 64, so plus 97. But you're pl effectively playing starters off the bench, so it's a little bit of a cheat code. But you mentioned Minifield. He started the second half and played all 20 minutes of that second half. Mm -hmm. Ends up with 28 games in his second game as a hog. Really, it was his Bud Walton Arena debut. And you mentioned the 11 points. He was efficient uh, inside the arc, 0 for 3 from out, from from, from three-point distance. Uh, but but then that made him four of, of uh, if my math is right, four or five inside of it. Uh, quick twitch guy, shifty east and west. Arkansas has been missing some of the guys that can get separation. We know Layden Blocker is a guy that gets separation off the bounce, but he's more of a straight line A to B after that explosive first step than he likes to get to the rim. Uh, Minifield has a little bit different quality about his, his ability to get separation and get a numbers advantage. And I thought Arkansas took advantage of that. And then Caleb Battle, he had a bounce back game. You know, he was Arkansas's leading scorer in the loss to OU. And again, you got handled from start. 13 points. Nobody's going to remember that he was Arkansas's leading scorer once again in that loss that everybody wants to forget about. But he laid an egg against Lipscomb only 11 minutes. We know he's had a role as a six man all year. No surprise there, but only 11 minutes and two points. So his 18 points on efficient shooting, Evan, getting back to the free throw line, doing some of those other things. And then Tremont Mark, what can you say about him? Knocked down both of his threes, five of six at the foul line. We know the foul line hasn't been easy for him at all, all always. Uh, nine of 14 overall off the field. But those 11 rebounds, his two offensive rebounds, his first two offensive rebounds of the season. These are the things Mossman talks about when he says effort plays. Guys can, there are guys in here that have talent and can go get buckets. But Arkansas needs more than that from key guys like Tremont Mark, who came in build as kind of a do it all, you know, defensive of this and that. Uh, but you, you know, getting back to Minifield real quick, does he now give Arkansas, um, some hope at that lead guard spot. I don't think he's a, a natural, true facilitate first guy, but I think he's a willing passer. I think the same about blocker, um, you know, but I think Minifield because of his ab ability to create a lot of different shots for himself, is going to draw help defenders. And then you hope he understands when to get off the ball, help set up teammates and continue to keep defenses on their heels. This is, and the, you want that ball to move above all else. I mean, you, you know, one-on-one -on -one basketball worked in this last game. I don't know how much it works moving forward in most of the matchups because the, the competition, is, when you get into SEC play, even Wilmington, a lot of quad one win opportunities, some cute two, not very many bad loss opportunities. Wilmington would count as that, even though that's a good team just because of net. Um, but I think Arkansas's um, offense has got to still figure out a way to get Trevor and Brazil more involved. We don't, you know, six to seven. Took the next words right out of my mouth.
All right. Well, you set it up then. <laughs> well, because I was going to ask you. Break, don't I? I'm, I'm getting carried away. A big, a big theme in the last couple of games as we move kind of into that UNC Wilmington is that Previn Brazil is kind of getting lost in the mix of all of these Arkansas players. Is that, you know, him still recovering from the injury or is that just him? You know, he's looked a little bit like a step and a half slow on defense and hasn't been getting back. Is he still hurt or is that just he, he's kind of just lost in his game right now and trying to find his way back to being full healthy, to being that dynamic scorer that we saw a couple of weeks ago? You know, it's a great question because not only did he, was he out for a year with a knee injury, he's looked explosive. He had a great pro day all the way back in October where NBA scouts were telling me he looked like a lottery pick. You, and we know that. We've talked a lot about it. And then he's had big, massive double-doubles against high-level competition, played well in the exhibition win over Purdue, played well in the win over Duke. Uh, he's, he's had some big games, uh, but there haven't been consistent performances from him. And then consistently, he's not, he's been a kind of a matador Swiss cheese defender. You know, he's good in help situations because he's got all that length and athleticism can cover a lot of ground quickly, come out of his area to block a shot, but he's not really a guy that's very imposing trying to defend other bigs, uh, even guards. I mean, he just kind of gets out of the way sometimes or does a little ball watching I've noticed. Um, maybe I'm picking on him too much because you're still got the mental aspect of being out for a year with a knee. Then you tweak that ankle like he did. And that was rough going for him. Uh, obviously trying to get back and, you know, mm -hmm. so there may be some things at play with his mental state in terms of, you know, how to approach play, you know, playing with full effort based on not wanting to get hurt again, not wanting to be back. And, you know, here we are back to the drawing board. I can understand that to some degree, but at, you know, his limits have been, his minutes have been limited. His minutes have been limited. And, and a lot of that's to do with Arkansas has been better with other combinations and you got to win games. Arkansas can't afford any more bad losses. And like I said, coming up is going to be not a lot of bad losses on the docket. <laughs> you, there'll be a handful going forward. That's it. In the next 20, whatever, how many games are left. Uh, but you're not going to have, uh, you're not, you're not 19 games. So you're not going to have very many, uh, where you don't need all hands on deck playing better than Arkansas's played. I, if, if Eric Mosman's this deep into it, not in the past, when they got into league play and struggled, it was one piece, maybe two that he tweaked. He's he's, it's just a revolving door. It's a revolving door of lineups and rotations. He's not to me. I don't see that he's close. He keeps telling the media. I asked him recently. Do you, are you close to figuring out who it is? He goes, I already know. But then we continue to see <laughs> the in and out and stuff. So it's um, just a cycle of just ongoing. Find a way to win these last two or three games, knowing what he's going to do when league play starts. Or he's uh, he's trying to make, make himself believe he knows, and he did, it's just not there yet. Absolutely. Like I've said, it's just kind of this cycle that just keeps going on and on. And and you saw in that last game, Trevin played 15 minutes and Devo Davis finish the game at the four, which, which to us is something that we haven't seen yet this year. And the hogs going that small and Chandler Lawson, you know, finishing a really good game. I think he was one point yeah. and one rebound shy of a double, double, but let's look ahead. Let's look at UNC Wilmington. This is a team that they shouldn't be slept on. One of the favorites in their conference. How do the hogs have to prepare for this team coming up? Well, one thing you do, you better go walk, pay attention to what Wilmington did against North or excuse me, Kentucky. Uh, the, at that time, ranked 12th in the country, went into rough and upset Kentucky. So Arkansas has already felt that burn against Greensboro, another team out of North Carolina. Arkansas uh, lost to North Carolina Tar Heels, beaten Duke out of North Carolina. So this is a chance to get even. Two and two against the state of North Carolina. I mean, you know, that, that's better than, than, than one and three, right, mm -hmm. right Evan? So you, you want to win, you, you, but you, you, this would be a bad loss on the resume. Our Arkansas right now is not ranked that far ahead of Wilmington when you start looking at the net. Arkansas is 95th. I think Wilmington's somewhere between 100, 106, 107, right? You know, kind of slot and inch and close to top 100, but that's still on your home court. If you lose that game, it's another quad three loss. Uh, so Arkansas needs to win this game to, to try to help a resume there. Right now, most of the, the bracketologists don't even have Arkansas in the bubble right now. The ones I look at, uh, there's several out there. But Arkansas is really not even trending on the bubble, let alone a last four in or a, you know, so Arkansas has got to take care of business against Wilmington. This is a team that's capable of beating any high major on any given night is already gone on an SEC court against a ranked team. Arkansas is not a ranked team anymore. Um, and, you know, Arkansas, again, if there's any idea of looking past, I mean, Arkansas has a full week between Wilmington and the start of SEC play back home against Auburn, by the way. 
an Auburn game team, even at home, will qualify as a quad one opportunity. You can't look past that. You got a week to prepare for that. Focus on this. Arkansas is on break right now. They get back tomorrow night, Christmas night. This is Christmas Eve. They'll be back. Uh, I think they're back on the court Christmas night or reconvening anyway. And we'll see if they get wait to, to uh, you know, I, th- I think Melsman mentioned they'll be going back into two a days again through the week. Mm-hmm. That's what happens when you have a lot of unanswered questions, more pro more questions than answers. And I think Wilmington is that next test that could leave Arkansas really in a bad spot going into SEC play, which has always been troublesome for Arkansas. Uh, even before Mossman, the previous staff had troubles out of the gates. Arkansas starts slow for whatever reason. Uh, this could be a season, I thought, coming into it with all the collective experience and talents that, are, that I still believe in, uh, would, would be able to maybe not start so poorly. But where they are now, you know, it, that's probably a better guess than they're going to start 3-0 and or 4-0 and in league play. Although that could happen. And again, I, you know, people are ready to turn the page on Purdue. It didn't count, but this is the best team in the country, and Arkansas beat the best team in the country on its home court in a game both teams were, you know, had all their players and, and, and you know, were trying to win that game. And then you've got the Duke outcome. You've got a competitive game against a ranked Memphis team in, on a neutral court. Arkansas, what, lost by five. is a game Arkansas led in at a chance to win. Arkansas led North Carolina at halftime. There are It's inconsistent basketball. It's not a lack of the pieces to be a good team. And Arkansas uh, probably deserves to not be on the bubble right now. And the four losses in non-conference are twice as many as Arkansas's ever had under Eric Melsman. Speaks plainly enough. I mean, we could break it down in just a few simple talking points. I go on and on. You can just break it down to one or two, three points and understand this is not where you want to be getting into jumping into SEC play shortly. Yeah, and Joe Lenardi had Arkansas in his latest bracketology, kind of in that next up to the bubble. But one of those last teams in, like that five or six team on the next up in the really small writing that at least gives some fans kind of hope that they're close. But in reality, you still have the five teams ahead of them, then the then the next four out, then the first four out, then you actually are on the bubble. So Arkansas is a lot further off from making that tournament than maybe people might think. But again, it all it all it all, you know, matters when how do you start SEC play? And it, they they get no favors that it's the fact that one of the hottest teams in the country in Auburn is gonna be in Fayetteville to open up SEC play. But before we go, Kevin, pro hogs really quickly. Nick Smith Jr. had an incredible light, 17 points last night in the fourth quarter. What did you make of his game? Well, I watched it and I was this is the guy that I've seen do that kind of damage throughout his career. You know, Hog fans didn't get to see the best of Nick Smith Jr. He had a le- legitimate injury. The smartest thing for him to do was to peel away from the program, rehabilitate himself, and prepare for the draft. It hurt his draft stock. It hurt it, but that's how competitive he is. He wanted to have a season with the Razorbacks. Uh, so I think understanding that he's, you know, he's back closer to me to 100% than because I watched uh, his craft and his ability to use his quickness and skill in, in, in combination to get to spots. There's a lot better spacing in the NBA for a guy like him to just take it and run with it. Uh, he's still not finishing above the rim, something he's really good at. So I don't think he's fully right back mentally to where he was before he tweaked that knee when he got to Arkansas. But 17 fourth quarter points, five of six from three. Uh, he set some standards in that game. He tied uh, for this season. He's tied with uh, Keontae George, who played in Baylor. Uh, out of the D- Dallas Fort Worth area kid. I got to see a lot in the grassroots coming up to just like Nick Smith Jr. I saw Nick more, but both of those guys now tied for the most uh, fourth quarter points in any quarter this season by NBA rookie. Um, and the five three pointers is the most by a rookie in any quarter this season. And it's also a French, a Hornets record go or the last time I think something like that happened was back in the nineties. So it's pretty, you know, he finished with 19 points. That's a career high. Um, but you know, it's not a one-off he's played in some competitive fourth quarter stretches against the Miami heat against the Brooklyn nets and a win where he was on the court in crunch time in games that were still in the balance, not garbage time. And in those situations in a limp, small sample size, he's eight of 11 shooting from three in games where you're trading back and forth, trying to find a way to win. The Hornets have not been a winning organization. And so he needs some help around him. They've got some good young talent there. Brandon Miller, the number two overall pick. But uh, Nick Smith Jr., because of some injuries in the backcourt, got an opportunity last night, made the most of it, had an outstanding game. He also took his first NBA 
charge in that game. <laughs> he shot his first NBA free throws and made both of them. He had three rebounds, two assists in 25 minutes. And it, you know, Denver had a double digit lead when he went off and he brought him back and got him within three. You know, he, he provided most of the offense in that fourth quarter. And I thought they should have ran a little more through him. Even having said that, uh, some other guys took some shots. I thought, man, go through this guy. This guy will get you over the finish line. I've seen it. I don't know, countless times on the highest stages, him being that dagger guy. And I think at the NBA, they're going to figure that out at some point. And then defensively, he's still a work in progress, but he did draw the charge. I noticed some other uh, possessions guarding an all-star in uh, Jamal Murray. He did a good job staying in front of him. Um, you know, he's still slot ability, still learning. He's got great wingspan, I think 6'10". Um, and, and, you know, Nick Smith Jr. is going to be a very good NBA player, as is Anthony Black who started 20 plus games. He had eight points in a win last night, a uh, six point win. And he started, I don't know, 22, 23 straight games. Bobby Portis uh, yesterday, a, a double, double his fifth of the season. Uh, t- uh, I think he uh, 21 points and, and 11 rebounds. So a big game for Bobby, you know, win on the road against the New York Knicks. Those teams will play again in the morning uh, central time on Christmas day is that big Christmas day lineup for ESPN and ABC. Yeah, going to be a great stretch of basketball tomorrow for any NBA fans. And, you know, you'll get some Hogs 2 playing as well. Well, Kevin, that's going to do it for us for this Hogs Hoops report. For everybody at home who's watched us all year long, we thank you. Have a great holiday. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. And, Kevin, we'll talk next week. That's going to do it. We'll see you guys next week.